From time to time, your SPXflow APV Golan homogenizer requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the service procedures necessary for replacing the packing materials, as well as removal, inspection and replacement of your homogenizer's check valves. Before you begin, make sure you have the homogenizer toolkit available. A list of the tools provided with the homogenizer can be found in the manual. It's important to abide by the following safety guidelines prior to performing maintenance on this equipment. Turn off electrical power, depressurize and de-energize this product. Wear proper personal protective equipment, PPE, that meets plant requirements and any applicable health and safety laws and regulations. Consult the product's instruction manual for further details. Remove the plastic cover over the plunger well by removing the two socket head cap screws and lifting the cover out of place. To remove the front safety shroud from the cylinder block, remove the two socket head cap screws that hold the shroud in place. Once the socket head cap screws are removed, the shroud can be lifted and pulled forward, exposing the top and front caps for maintenance access. Loosen the four nuts on one of the front caps. Then remove two of the nuts in a diagonal pattern, leaving two intact in case the cap comes off under pressure. Then back off the two remaining nuts, being careful not to fully remove them. Next, pull the front cap forward. If the cap does not come off easily, give it a firm wrap with a rubber mallet. Once it has been loosened and pressure released, the other two nuts can be removed. The front cap can now be completely removed and placed on a flat, clean surface. Next, remove the liquid cylinder head and inspect the gasket to make sure it does not contain any rough edges or pitting. Check the spring for signs of wear. Springs need to be replaced periodically. Place the spring on its end on a flat surface and compare its height to a new spring. If there is a height difference, the spring will need to be replaced. At some point during the maintenance procedure, the plungers may need to be repositioned for easier access. By turning the pulley manually by hand, you can change the positions of the plungers, making them more accessible. Next, disconnect the coupling from the plunger by removing one of the socket head cap screws and loosening the other two full turns. Take the removed socket head cap screw and thread it into the jacking hole and tighten. This will separate the coupling and allow it to be slipped off the plunger. The plunger can then be slipped forward and removed through the front of the cylinder block. Check the plunger for any scoring or irregular, uneven surfaces. A special packing removal tool is now required to remove the packing. Carefully remove the end nut and insert the tool through the front of the cylinder block. Reinstall the nut on the back side after the tool is through the packing arrangement. Tighten the packing removal tool into the nut and carefully pull forward to remove the complete packing arrangement, which includes the packing ring, the V-seals, as well as the brass packing adjustment ring. Remove the threaded nut and the packing arrangement will slip off of the packing removal tool. Check for any scoring on the metal parts. Check the wear on the plunger and the packing arrangement ring and then slip the ring onto the plunger in the area where the packing would normally ride. The packing adjustment ring should rock slightly, but not much. The maximum recommended clearance is 12 thousandths of an inch or 0.3 millimeters. If the clearance exceeds this, there is a risk of reduced plunger packing life due to packing extrusion. Next, position the ring to the other end of the plunger where there would not typically be any wear. Rock it again. If the amount of rocking is the same in both positions, both parts are good. If it rocks significantly in the area where the packing rides, but only slightly on the other end, you'd have to replace the plunger. If it rocks significantly on all positions of the plunger, the packing adjusting ring would need to be replaced. Next, check the inside of the packing adjustment ring for any burrs or scoring, and confirm that the part is in good shape. For training purposes, only one plunger position is being demonstrated in this video. 
In a normal maintenance situation, all plungers should be checked by following the same procedure. To check the pump valves, remove the top cap by removing the four nuts. After the nuts are removed, the top cap can be lifted off the studs and removed. A small wrap with a rubber mallet may be necessary to assist in the cap removal process. Next, remove the ball stop and the valve spring. Inspect the spring for any wear and make sure there is no sign of rubbing on the inside wall or on the stop itself. Next, remove the valve guide using the mechanical gripper tool that is part of your homogenizer toolkit. Reach down and grasp the valve guide that sits on top of the check ball. Inspect the inside for any signs of wear, specifically on the internal part of the guide itself where the ball rides. To remove the check ball, use the special suction cup tool by inserting it into the bore on top of the ball. Slowly or carefully remove the ball from the bore. Look for any signs of wear on the ball. The surface should be very smooth with no signs of pitting or scoring. Next, inspect the gasket and replace it if there are any signs of wear. Inspect the check ball seat next for any scoring. The seat removal tool, which included a puller and an aluminum extension rod, will now be required to remove the seat. Do not remove the seat unless you are planning to replace it. Remove the nut on the bottom of the puller. Next, use the aluminum extension rod to secure and position the nut in line with the plunger below the seat in the plunger bore. Place the puller cylinder in the area between the studs and tighten the puller shaft into the nut that you are holding with the aluminum extension rod. Once the puller has been aligned and tightened down to the spacer block, the extension rod can be unscrewed and removed from the plunger. Use a wrench to turn the nut on the puller to remove the seat from the bore. Ensure that the puller has a good grip on the seat and you maintain a solid footing as it may quickly release from the bore at the end of the pulling process. As stated earlier, do not remove the seat unless you plan on replacing it. Once the seat is removed, a new seat must be reinstalled. In order to remove the suction check ball, use the special hook tool. Push it into the plunger bore. Hook the top of the valve guide and lift carefully to remove the guide. Perform the same inspection you did on the discharge valve guide. Make sure there's no wear or scoring on the guide. In order to remove the ball, use the right angled end of the suction cup tool. Insert it into the packing bore, make contact with the check ball, and carefully remove it. Check the ball for any scoring or pitting or signs of wear on the ball surface. To remove the suction check valve seat, thread the puller nut onto the aluminum extension rod. Insert it into the suction board directly underneath the seat that is being removed. Insert the threaded rod down through the valve bore and screw it into the nut being held under the seat. Tighten down the nut on top of the removal tool until you make contact with the cylinder and snug up. Remove the aluminum extension rod and proceed to remove the seat. Use a wrench to turn the removal tool, pulling the seat up out of the bore. Ensure that the puller has a good grip on the seat and you maintain a solid footing as it may quickly release from the bore at the end of the pulling process. Again, do not remove the seat unless you plan on replacing it. Once the seat is removed, a new seat must be reinstalled. If the valve seats have to be installed, they must be frozen by either packing them in dry ice, immersing them in an acetone dry ice mixture, or placing them in a freezer for 30 minutes. Make sure the valve seats and the cylinder bore are clean before installing. Push the valve seats down into the bore and tap in place with a piece of wood or brass. Install the suction check ball into the seat. Slip the guide over the check ball. On smaller homogenizers, you may have to use the tool to position the guide and place it over the check ball. Make sure it is in place. Do the same with the discharge check ball and guide. The ball is placed on the seat first. 
Then the valve guide is inserted over the ball. Place the spring on top, then carefully insert the valve stop into the valve bore. Push in place to make sure the spring is actuating properly. Install the top cap. It is important the bore in the top cap is positioned down and slips over the check valve stop. Check to make sure there is a food grade anti-seize compound on the nuts and threads of the studs. Install the nuts on the studs. Be aware the studs for the top caps may be a different size than the studs for the front caps. Use your socket wrench to securely tighten the nuts. Make sure to tighten in a cross pattern. Do not tighten completely. Snug them down hand tight initially. In a cross pattern, tighten the nuts a little further and then finally in a third cross pattern to snug them down securely. It is extremely important that all four nuts be evenly tightened. Once the check balls are installed, the new packing can be installed. Always use genuine OEM packing supplied by SPX Flow. The first step is to install the brass packing adjustment ring. Slip it over the plunger. Insert the plunger and packing adjustment ring into the packing bore. Push the plunger into the coupling that secures it to the crosshead extension. Push it firmly and make sure it bottoms out in the coupling and contacts the crosshead extension. Remove the socket head cap screw that was used as a jacking screw to open the coupling. The coupling will fit snug on the plunger once the jacking screw has been removed. Keep pressure on the front side of the plunger as you install the two socket head cap screws into the coupling. Use an Allen wrench to secure the bolts in place. Do not over tighten. The packing rings are installed on the plunger one at a time with the open part of the V facing out towards the front. Slip the first ring over the plunger and use the packing assembly tool to push the packing ring onto the plunger into the packing bore. Next, install the second packing ring following the same procedure. Install the third packing ring following the same procedure. If the bill of materials for your machine calls for a fourth packing ring, follow the same installation procedure. This particular homogenizer only requires three. Use a mallet to firmly tap the packing into place. Install the stainless steel packing ring making sure the flat side is facing out and the formed side is facing toward the packing. Use the packing assembly tool and firmly tap the packing assembly into place until you feel it bottom out. Install the gasket into the packing bore. Next, install the packing spring. Next, install the liquid cylinder head and push it into place. Check to make sure there is a food grade anti-seize compound on the nuts and threads of the studs. Make sure the bore in the center of the front cap is facing toward the cylinder block and install the front cap. Install all four nuts on the studs. Make sure to tighten in a cross pattern. Do not tighten completely. Snug them down to hand tight initially. In a cross pattern, tighten the nuts further, and then finally, in a third cross pattern to secure the nuts down completely. It is extremely important that all four nuts be evenly tightened. After maintenance is complete and all the front cap and top cap nuts are tightened down properly, place the safety shroud back over the cylinder assembly. Install the two socket head cap screws and tighten to secure. To reinstall the plastic safety cover over the plunger well, be careful to position it in the proper orientation. Put the cover in place and install the two socket head cap screws hand tight at first. Then use an Allen wrench to secure. The belts wear as the machine runs. It is a good idea to check the belts whenever maintenance is being performed. Rotate to different positions to expose the inside of the belts. If there is any visible damage, the belt should be replaced. At times, there will be signs of belt debris on the base of the machine, which is a sign the belt should be thoroughly examined. It is also important to make sure the belts are properly adjusted. For every inch of span between the pulley centers, there should be 1 64th inch of belt deflection. 
For a span of 64 inches, there should be one inch deflection of the belts. In section six of the manual, the following instruction is given. The V-belts must not move more than 15 millimeters per meter of free belt length. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX Flow APV Gallen homogenizer to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order genuine replacement parts or tools, contact your authorized SPX Flow sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/apv for more information.